The last job to do on my Kawasaki Super 6 is to build up the bodywork and the petrol tank by fitting the cap, the tap, the badges and the rubber grommets so it can be fitted onto the bike. The very first thing I do to the petrol tank is make sure the top spout has been cleaned of all paint as it's absolutely essential to prevent ethanol in the petrol eating under the lacquer and lifting it off. And if it's left unchecked, it can go right across the petrol tank in a few days, destroying the paint. So I make sure it's really smooth and back to bare metal. I'm fitting a pattern aftermarket petrol cap because the original was badly oxidised and sometimes it's not easy to get them re chromed to an acceptable standard. These are very easy to fit if you do some basic precautions to protect the paint on the tank. And the pin is a very tight fit into the cap and it pivots in a hole in the tank. Now sometimes there's a bit of paint left over, so I use a drill in a tap holder, gently twist by hand to remove any paint that's in the hole. This will allow the pin to slide in nicely when you offer up the cap. The next thing to do is tap the pin into the cap so that it's flush with the inner opening. To do this, I use a little hammer holding it in my hand, gently tapping it in until it's flush with the inside. And to check whether it's flush, I use a little stick, a little scriber, and just go backwards and forwards over the pin. You can feel if it's sticking through too much. If it sticks through too much, you won't get it on the tank. Before I start putting it on the tank, I actually put some old gasket paper and stick it on with um, masking tape so that the hammer won't hit the tank by accident. And then put the cap up to the little protrusion, line it up with a little pointer, put that in a slightly smaller diameter to locate the centre of the hole. And then using the hammer, I slide it across the paper so there's no chance of denting the tank, hitting the um, pivot gently until it's engaged. Once it's engaged, I then use my little punch and the hammer to tap it all the way home flush. With the pivot pin tapped in flush, I just check the cap operates okay. It hinges backwards and forwards nicely, so I remove the um, gasket paper and check with the key that it locks, and it locks great. So that's that done. The next job is to fit the badges to the side of the tank. Now these pattern badges, they come straight and you have to bend them into a curve. Now some of them are brittle, some of them are soft, and they're very hard to bend by hand without potentially snapping them. So the easiest way to do it is to get a bit of steel bar, bend it in the vise into a radius that sort of matches the tank, just by eye, it's good enough. When you're happy with that, you put that back in the vise and do it up really tight and use that as a former to bend the badges. So here's a badge going on. So I hold it with my thumb and you gently tease it down. Don't be tempted to do it all in one go. Just gently tease it down, turn it around, do it both ways. Keep pushing down until you're happy that it looks right. And when you offer it up to the tank, it's supposed to touch nicely all the way around, which this did. So when you're really happy, it's good. Get the screws one at a time, engage with the thread, and be careful not to scratch the tank. If, if the badge drops down, it could scratch the tank. Then put in a second screw, job done. And obviously repeat that for the other side. The rear fin is a standard assembly, so all I had to do was put in some grommets and some steel spacers, and they just literally slip straight in. The grommets are made in two pieces with some tapered washers. So you pop it up from underneath, then you put the top rubber washer on around the correct way, till it snaps down and then push the little bit of tube in the centre. And you do this four times to complete the fin. The side panels needed a little bit of work before they were painted. They had originally two holes in for the badge and I would need three for my Z1B badges that I'm going to be fitting. So what I used was a product called Q-Bond. It's amazing stuff. It's a two-stage glue. So you've got powder that you sprinkle in the hole move it off flush with your thumb, and you drop in the adhesive and it sets instantaneously. So the first thing to do is put a bit of masking tape over the back or the front, it doesn't matter. Pour the powder in, then use your finger just to get rid of the, the excess of its flush. And very careful with the adhesive because it sticks your fingers together as well, obviously. Two drips or one drip on each one. And you can see it wick down into the powder and set instantly. Then you peel off the paper and it's nice and smooth. So when I take that to Neil now, you can sand that all back and paint that, and you can't tell. So when I get my panels back, they're all smooth, ready for drilling. So the cube on adhesive comes in a little bottle for the black powder, and you get grey powder as well, and you get the adhesive here, and you get a little box for about £10. It's very good. Now here's the panel. Now I've already drilled and fitted this side panel on the bike to get it where I wanted it, 
And to make it match exactly on the other side panel, I use this method where I line the panels up by eye from above, looking down to get them in the same position. And you put masking tape at 90 degrees to the base of the panel, stick it on both, both sides of the badge at the right width, all by eye, and then that'll give you the width. And then what you do then, you put another um, bit of masking tape across at the bottom of the top, the bottom of the badge. Then you put another piece at the bottom of the actual side panel, like that. Then you put another piece at the top or the bottom of the other side panel, but parallel with the first piece of tape. And then you just judge by eye, because it's ever so easy by eye, just judge it and get the other piece the same gap to match the top one. And just to make sure, I check it with my caliper and it's pretty much spot on first time, which is good. So then I put the badge and I rest it on top, lining it up with the masking tape and just double check that it looks right, which it does. So I get a bit of paint, put on each of the terminals. There's three terminals that stick through. It's always a good thing to make sure these terminals are straight first, otherwise you'll put the holes in the wrong place. And if they're slightly bent, just tease them straight with some pliers. Rest it on the panel, three dots, and you can start drilling. Now you have to be very careful with the drilling. You don't want it to wander. So I've got a, an electric drill that starts very slow and gradually speeds up, which is perfect. So I drill the first hole, offer up the badge to make sure it's in the right size, which it is. And I had a quick look to see that the legs lined up with the paint dots, which they did. Just double check, and then you can start drilling the other holes, because you've got one chance of getting this right. Although you can't see it behind the badge if you do make a slight mistake, but it's nice to get it right. So that's the two holes engaged nicely. And I just do the last hole, and then there's the badges fitting on nicely. The next thing to do is turn the panel over, put it on a piece of cloth so you don't damage the surface of the paint, to press on the little catches, the little washers with the serrated edges that prevent the badges from falling off. Now I found the easiest way to use to do this is to use a little tiny socket on a push bar so you can press, put the washer on with your hand, press it down nice and firm and it holds the badge on really secure and it's not going to fall off. And here it is, all fitted to the bike, out in the sunshine, waiting to be enjoyed. We can't ride it now, as you know, with the coronavirus issue we've got going on. But hopefully very soon, I'll be out on a ride to give it a good old test.